Well, hey guys, welcome back to Waters Family Homestead. Well, my helper couldn't come today. He's got a pregnant girlfriend and they had to go do something, ultrasounds or something today, so he wasn't able to come, but that's all right. I've been home a little while. I've let chickens out. I gave them some scratch. They are starting to act more normal. It's been week and a half since the dog killed the 21 but came out here and i pulled the bad peaches off the tree left the good ones there's still a few up there i hope i get some i didn't mess with this tree that fell and some of those peaches actually look better than the others but i did i've got two pieces of rolls of fence and I've got, <coughs> excuse me, one full 300 foot roll. And by marking out where I was going to run the goat pen, which will start up here at the corner, come across and all the way down this side, past that cedar tree a little bit, there'll be a gate and then it'll come all the way across and over to here and up to this corner. So I started rolling out the fence. I weeded it around here yesterday so we didn't have so many weeds to, to deal with, you know, trying to get the fence to go where we wanted it. And uh, I stood the fence up today, this larger of the two partial rolls. I think it's a larger piece anyway. So this is about this piece on the back edge here or on the, what I call the back, is about 40 feet. And then from this corner up back to the building is pretty close to 55 feet. So roughly 90 to 95 feet. And I've got enough wire to do that. So, and then the other 300 feet will more than do the rest of the area. So I'll have some little bit left over. But I still, I've got to buy the hinges and stuff to, to, to mount this gate up here. And I'm going to have to buy hinges to mount that gate that's going back there. And the four-foot gate that's going up front, I'm going to have to buy hinges for and mount. So, I'm not worried about the gates right now. If I can get the fence, this part of it ran since I'm not having to add poles or anything. Just go to the post I've already got. That's what I'm going to try to do. And then when we get another chance to do, get more work done i'm gonna try to get more holes dug and get the wood post in and start i've got the t-post driver the manual one i didn't get the gas powered one but start driving in t-post so that we'll be able to pull that fence and uh that's that's a lot more work when i've got to dig a bunch of holes especially as dry as it's been but I'm still trying to work on it. I just, my helper wasn't able to today. So it is what it is, guys. You know, I'm, I'm working a little at a time. I've also got to buy the wire ties to tie it to the T-post. But there's no way a dog's going through this. This is cattle fence or goat fence, cow fence, whatever. It's four foot tall. It's a nice strong fence and it's got some big holes small animals can get through it the holes are smaller on the bottom so i'd rather have the smaller all the way around but it is what it is this is what i've got so i'm going to start at this post and run the roughly 35 to 40 feet that way and then back up to that building if i can get that part done and then work on that'll finish off securing the chicken run this one and hopefully run that last piece on the back side of the other chicken run that'll finish securing both chicken runs to where it'd be really difficult for a dog to get in there unless they just jump the fence so i'm working on it I've got a lot left to do. I've got a lot of T-posts down there that are going to need driven in. But I'm going to get it done. It's just a matter of one old man by himself, one old fat man by himself. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot of work. 
So, my brother does have an auger for his tractor, and he's got a guy that helps on the farm. If I ask Bill to come out here with the tractor and the auger, he'd, he'd dig the post holes for me with the auger. Um, but it's not but about five or six holes. I'll survive it. It'll just take me a little longer. I don't like asking people for stuff, so it is what it is. But the eight chickens that I've got are doing well. You see, this is one of the teenagers, actually. Looks grown, but she's actually a teenager. And I'm not sure if it's a rooster or a hen. I keep waiting to see if Sue tries to mount her. If, if he tries to mount it, then it that tells me it's probably a hen. But if, but if he just fights it, then it tells me it's probably going to be a rooster. But the little light colored one here is a Rhode Island Red. The one that was injured in the corner, she's doing really well. I got two adult hens and I got two eggs a day and I got zero yesterday. So they're not going to lay every day, especially after what all they went through just a little over a week ago. But I do have enough scrap lumber that I'm going to put a support brace on that corner post and that corner post. Don't know if I'll put one on there or not. Those posts are solid. They're in the ground, a good depth. They don't move, but I may put one on there while we're pulling the fence at least. And then this corner post up here is just standing up in a hole. It's not even packed in or dug completely yet. That hole's almost two feet deep. And in my ground, y'all, that's like five foot anywhere else. But uh, I, I need to redig those holes and then get the post in and get some concrete poured around them. So I've still got to buy concrete. There's a, there's a lot more into it than just saying, hey, let's put some fence up. But I'm working on it. There are other things that end up taking priority. And I'm going to give y'all an example on one. Y'all know I've got my old Ford truck. I don't drive it much. Most of the time when I do drive it, I drive it to church. Well, I haven't driven it the last few Sundays because it's been hot. And even though my air conditioning worked great when I bought that truck three years ago, it's paid for, y'all. Um, I tried to charge it the other day to add some refrigerant to it to get it cooler because it wasn't blowing as cold as it should. And the compressor's going on, off, on, off. Well, I got it charged up and it was blowing pretty cool. And about five minutes after that, the compressor clutch started whining and making a racket and lock, well, it didn't lock up, but the compressor's not working. So I'm ordering a new compressor for the truck and a dryer. And hopefully next week, there'll be a day or two spent taking that compressor off and the dryer off and putting a new air conditioning compressor in that truck with a new dryer. And uh, then I can pull a vacuum on it and get it charged up and have air conditioning so i be comfortable to drive my own truck. But it is just too doggone hot to drive, guys, in southwest Georgia when you've got a heat index that adds... 15 degrees to what it actually is we've had some 94 95 96 temperature days and you add 15 degrees to that 13 to 15 is what we've been experiencing of humidity to make it feel you know that much hotter i'm not driving my truck when the air conditioner is not working so that moved up to the top of the list as far as what i'm spending money on so I'm going to spend a couple hundred bucks since I can do it myself with a helper, of course. But I can charge it up and all that myself since I do HVAC. And uh, hopefully I'll get that going in the next week or so. And then I'll go back to driving my personal truck a little bit more when I'm not working. Um, unfortunately, I can't make them ship it any faster than they're going to ship it. So, but... You know, that takes a couple hundred bucks, and y'all know I've spent a hundred bucks on the landscape timbers and and the, the nails and stuff to, to fix the, the chicken fence, and plus I'm paying the guy that's helping me, and, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a complete tight-wadded butthole. I pay him way better than we pay him at work because this is physical hard labor, and, uh, you know, a lot of what I do is some of it is hard but a lot of it is in the brain you got to know what to do and how to do it so uh um, i've been paying him so you know you throw a couple hundred bucks unexpected on this 
securing the chicken fence project, which turns out to go into the goat fence project, and then throw in another couple hundred bucks unexpected on fixing the air conditioning on my truck. And I've actually got some new parts for my 53 Harry Ferguson that I've never put on. I'm not done ordering the parts for that, but so there's there's always something that comes up and I am working on it as you know as much as I can as fast as I can but uh, all the chickens are doing well um, I know junior wishes he had a whole lot more females than one but I've only got two adult females so he's got one and the two female turkeys are in there with him and then I didn't want sue by himself so sue's got a teenager and a adult female with him and then the other little teenager, the last one that I hatched, is that brown and white one in there. Let me zoom in. Is that one. It's a couple of months old. And then the other two little ones on the ground right below it are the ones I bought from Tractor Supply. Out of 15, one died, and then the dogs killed 12. So that, that left me two. Hopefully, they'll be females, but, you know, it is what it is. I can't, they told me they were females, but they're always wrong. Y'all know, y'all know that. If you've ever bought pullets, you know, they're supposed to be female and half of them turn out to be males. And my luck here lately, those two that survived will probably be roosters. But either way, that gives me eight chickens. I wish I still had at least half a dozen adults, so I was getting enough eggs to meet the needs of my customers that buy eggs from me and my family that get eggs from me for free but i just don't i'm i'm lucky if i get a dozen eggs a week right now and uh, i'm you know i'm doing all i can but with having to fix the truck and having to spend money to repair the fences and spend money to get the goat fence started and hopefully done in the next month or so if everything goes right, you know, it is what it is. I am trying. But I wish I had more exciting videos for you guys. I would love, and, and the guy helping me told me today, he didn't mind being on camera. So when we're out here pulling fence, I may get the tripod out and set the camera up on time lapse and let y'all watch us work. Um, which I don't do that very often. But, um... I've definitely got enough fence to do what I would need to do. I've got enough posts. I've got enough T-post, um, the wood post and the T-post. we got to get framed up back here for the shelter. I'm, I've got almost enough metal to completely cover it. So at least a dog stall and one more stall for the goats will have a cover, you know, a roof over it. So, and I've got those pallets I'm going to use to start with the divider walls and I'm going to screw OSB to those pallets. So that'll help keep them separate and keep them warm in the winter time. Um, so I, you know, that's, that's more money spent guys. And there's a lot to do. I am, I, I want to end up running a power wire from the power at the well back here. So I've got power for the lights for the chickens and, and the heat lights for the dog and the animals in the goat pasture or paddock and uh <clears throat> the water line runs down to the chicken pens here but i may dig it up right here or i was actually thinking up here and tee over and put a faucet of some sort right there beside the gate going in oh let me zoom out i'm sorry come off the well line right here and run across and put a faucet there so that I can just turn a faucet on with a small piece of hose that the goats can't hurt and fill up their waterer and the dog waterer and all that right there. It'd make things simpler and easier. And uh, so, you know, there's a lot of little things that add up to one big project. And uh, I'm just doing what I can a little bit at a time. Uh, now, a couple of years ago, I spent a bunch of money. I say a bunch. I, I spent some money and stockpiled PVC fittings like elbows and couplings and, you know, tees and every all the three-quarter inch PVC fittings that you think you would ever need. I've got at least a case that comes in either 50 or 100. I think most of them were 100 
to the case. I've got at least a case of each thing that I could possibly need in there and plus the regular plumbing bag that I keep pretty well stocked. So it's just the, the pipe that I need to buy now. I've got a little bit, but not enough to do what I want to do because every paddock that I end up building is going to have its own faucet. I'm not going to be running water hose across the ground and dragging them and moving them and doing all that. If I'm going to do it, might as well do it right and put a faucet at each point. So I can come off easy enough right here and then I can dig in down here where it runs under the barn and, and go down to the corner there and put a faucet. But that's the same paddock. So what I would end up doing would be running across that paddock to where the next paddock is once it's fenced in and all that and put a faucet there so that I could water the next paddock if I've got pigs or goats or whatever in there. And that saves a whole lot of work on water and animals when you just turn a faucet on and, you know, then turn it off instead of having to move water hose and drag hose and all that. So there's a lot going into it, guys. I'm... I'm usually a pretty thorough planner as far as the turkey wants attention as far as details of planning things out and that comes from my prepping lifestyle I try to think about what if and if this happens what will we will I need to do or what will I need to have and you know so I put a lot of thought into everything that I do sometimes I miss something of course I'm human but God gave me that gift, so I'm using it. But it's, unfortunately, he didn't give me the gift of being a rich son of a gun. So uh, I am who I am, and I'm going to try to continue growing my homestead a little at a time as I can afford it, and also regrowing my flock of, I say turkeys and chickens. Right now, I'm just focusing on chickens. So I actually want to get a goose. If anybody's in the area and has a baby goose then I could get. I'll buy whatever to put in with my baby chickens so that it will raise up with my baby chickens and be part of that flock. I would appreciate it because geese are some very ferocious defenders. They'll defend against a dog or anything else. Anything that comes in their territory that starts messing with their flock, they will fight and most things will run from a goose. Um, they're, they're, a lot of times they're better than a, a livestock guardian dog, but, um, so that's what I want. I want to put a goose in with, with each flock of poultry that I have and raise them up with some of them so that they will be part of that flock and they will stay with them and help protect them. So there's a lot of things going on and I also want to get an actual livestock guardian dog that's bred for you know being a livestock guardian dog there are certain breeds that are much better at it than others so uh, you know there's a lot down the road and there's a lot to work out the details on and and resource find those things find those animals or whatever but from here to the back of this paddock which is past that big cedar tree down there it's probably a little over a hundred feet. Now, it doesn't sound like a whole lot, y'all, but it may be 110, 120, something like that. I'll measure it off one day. I looked for my large tape measure a little while ago and couldn't find it, and I just said, heck with it, I'm gonna do the video anyway. But, um, so it's this is a pretty long area, and another project that I wanna have done when I can afford it is pay a tree surgeon to come out here and take a lot of these limbs and prune them way back to get them off the top of the chicken pen and open this up a little bit so the grass will grow a little better back here and and not have to worry about the tree limbs falling so i want to prune this tree back a lot um and that's going to have to be done little pieces at a time so it don't destroy everything when it falls so there's always something. If I had a bucket truck, I would have done this years ago. I just don't have one. But uh, Sparky is being Sparky. He He's playful with everything and everybody that comes up. He does bark pretty ferociously sometimes, but I've never seen an aggressive bone in that dog's body. I think he's just grateful that I rescued him off the 
dirt road, starving to death. And uh, he's never shown any aggression toward anything, not even cats. He doesn't even chase her when she goes across, other than to play. He doesn't chase her to attack her. So, anywho, that's what I got, guys. I appreciate you guys watching. I am working on it. I will try to video as much as I can when I'm working on stuff, or at least when I've what I've gotten done and show y'all that. But I can see that new fence standing up back there from here. I don't know how well y'all can see. But it ain't mounted or anything yet. But that's definitely going to add a lot of security to the animals. Because a regular dog is not going to go through that. A coyote, they might jump it. You know, they may whatever, dig under it. But that's going to take some time. So I'm working on it. Guys, I appreciate y'all. Remember what I always tell you. Jesus Christ loves you, and so do I. Y'all be safe and be prepared.